Hey, welcome back to Turntable Guy. On the bench today, we have an absolute beast. This is quite possibly the heaviest turntable that I get here, um, as far as repairs and servicing. Uh, the Thorns TD125 Mark II. Um, it is so heavy. I, I it, You have to lift it to believe it. Um, the top part of the plinth here is complete solid metal and I don't know what kind of iron they're using but it is super super heavy and it's got a wood base on it this one's come in uh, for several reasons uh, it needs a service uh, it's uh, running well, it takes forever to get up to speed and uh, as you can see here this is a suspended plinth uh, there are three springs under here and if, what should happen is when you have your your platter on and your platter mat and your record uh, the plinth should float and in order for that to float the springs have to be very 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 strong and if you look here on this side the plinth has bottomed out over here we've got a little bit of spring action here but not enough but over here completely collapsed so I'm thinking uh, one of the springs needs adjustment uh, there are replacement springs available for this turntable still uh, if your springs have completely collapsed. So that's one of the things that's great about this turntable is they keep parts, um, uh, aftermarket guys are keeping parts available for them so you can continue to keep these things running. Uh, so let's uh, just have a quick look. I've plugged it in. Uh, this is great because you can actually control uh, pitch on this turntable. Now there's a pitch wheel here and there's a strobe light under here. And all you need to do, oh, by the way, this one has an SME 3000. Is it a 3000? The 3009, which is one of the common arms people put on this. You can also, I think it came with the, from the factory with a TP16 by Thorns, um, if I remember correctly. But a lot of people put SME arms on these uh, turntables. It sounds, these sound fantastic. Eh? When, if, when they're set up correctly, you got a nice cartridge and this SME arm. You're talking like transcription quality here. So this is a really beautiful turntable. I used to own a Thorns myself. It was my first real turntable. I bought a, a TD-166 Mark II back in like 1988 or so. Um, I sold it eventually. I, that's my stupidity, I guess. Um, the 166 isn't a super great turntable. It's got a pretty <laughs> flimsy plinth on it, but uh, I guess that's a story for another time. All right, so we're plugged in. Um, got the audio plugged in as well. So I'm just gonna show you, we're gonna flip the on switch and that'll get the, the platter going here and, and watch what's happening. So as you can see, it is taking forever to get up to speed. I know you probably cannot see that strobe. Uh, it's getting there. Almost. Almost. And there we go. We're now at 33 and third. So that's the issue. I, I'm gonna guess it's probably due to a bad belt. Let's see if we can get any sound here. I don't even know if this arm is set up correctly, to be honest with you, but I'm just going to put it down. All right, so we do have sound in both channels. And once it's running... The beauty of this turntable is, is no matter how crappy your belt is, unless it's falling right off the sub platter and the motor, um, once you get it up to speed, the Thorin's uh, logic is inertia. The platter is just massive. It's, it's one of the heavy platters um, that creates the inertia to keep this thing going, right? So once it's up to speed, it holds 33 perfectly. Right? That's that's a great thing about it. So even with a, a piece of crap belt, you know, you got to wait about five minutes to get your turntable up to speed. But once it's going, you know, it's going and it'll stay there, which is great. That just shows 
the theory behind their logic, right? Mass, inertia, speed stability, right? So that's what they were thinking back in the day. You know, whereas a company like Techniques, computer controlled, uh, direct drive, quartz lock for speed accuracy, right? So different ideas, you know, um, it depends on which one you, uh, you agree with more. Um, for me, it doesn't matter as long as it's stable because the one thing that really bothers me is uh, speed stability. Uh, especially if you get like a, a long string note or sometimes piano, you can hear the wavering in the sound on, on a cheap belt drive, I find more than anything else, and it just drives me nuts. So speed stability is number one in my books. But anyway, that's what's going on with this one. We will shut it off. Uh, working on a turntable such as this uh, requires you to be able to uh, get the turntable off your bench. So first of all, let's remove this record. And uh, I'll take off the platter. So it's got a hole cut out here. What you do is the 45 adapter just flips over and then you can put a, your 45s on there. And here is the massive, massive platter. So this thing, uh, is there a weight on here? Look at that, it's got a date code, 1973. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Here is your sub platter. This sits in a vat of oil in a bearing. And I can already see that this belt is no bueno. Yeah. Oh yeah, this thing's done. You can see the uh, the stretch marks in it. I mean, it's it's holding on, but I mean, we can turn it on right now with just the uh, sub platter on, and I'm sure it'll come up to speed a lot faster. But you can just see how much how much uh, deflection there is on here stretching this, right? So if I put it around the motor, look how loose that is. Even without the platter, you know, it takes a while for it to get up to speed. And you can just see it flinging around there. So that belt is shot. So that's that's probably our only problem with this turntable. It's just a, a belt. And obviously we have, uh, we have, you know, the, pl the, uh, the platter's off right now. So it's not as bad. But once you load up this, this plinth with the platter, it sinks right down. So we've got spring issue. So we'll remove the sub platter. There's oil on the axle. Excuse my head. Oh, the uh, the bearing well is completely dry. So there is nothing, not even a drop of oil in the bottom there where the thrust plate is, totally dry. So luckily there's just a little bit of lube, well, barely any, but there's a little bit of lube around the axle here. So we're gonna give this thing a, uh, a complete lubrication service. The service manual, which you can download at uh, Vinyl Engine, um, states that this bearing takes Caltex uh, Royal B oil, okay? Now I've looked that up and uh, can't get that here and I'm not gonna go looking for it, but uh, that roughly translates to an SAE 20. And believe it or not, our old friend, three in one for uh, electric motors is an SAE 20. So this is what it says right there. SAE 20. So that's what we'll be using to lubricate this bearing. So if you do have the original oil, Caltex Royal B, R-O-B is the short form for that. All right. Okay, so like I mentioned, extremely heavy. Even with the platter off, it still weighs a ton. So we're going to have to support it. Um, what I like to do with these is a like a, if you have a quart paint can, one there and one there, okay? That's one way of doing it when you turn it over. Um, but I think the best thing to do here is once we get it out, um, we're gonna have to adjust the springs. And to do that, we're gonna have to set up the paint cans a little differently and get in from underneath, right, to adjust the springs. So I'm gonna get set up here. I'm gonna unplug everything, the audio cables and so forth. And uh, how's that motor? 
motor feels all right. And right in the service manual, it says you do not need to, to oil the motor. So this turntable is, you know, 50 years old. Should we be uh, lubricating the motor? I'm thinking, yeah, you know, a drop on the top bearing probably wouldn't kill it. But according to the service manual, you don't need to. But were they thinking their turntable was going to last 50 years at that time when it was written? I don't know. So anyway, I'll be right back. Okay, we are supported. I've got one quart paint can roughly here, away from the arm, and one here supporting the uh, the plinth. And you can see the uh, massive chunks of iron here and what's underneath this turntable. Uh, here's our uh, power supply, motor control board, all that kind of good stuff. Motor, main spindle bearing, and here are our three springs. One, down here, two, and three. And I can already see that this one is very loosey-goosey. And what you do is you actually, and hopefully it's uh, tightening. They are threaded, but you have to be very careful not to strip the threads because you're screwing in plastic into this thick metal. So if they get uh, cross-threaded, you're kind of screwed. Okay, um, I just wanted to show you the bottom. Really, this adjustment has to be done with the turntable sitting uh, right side up. So that is one thing we have to do afterwards. Um, there are a couple issues with this motor board. And uh, to get it out, I'm going to have to loosen a few screws there and there. And I want to show you this board and uh, a couple of the complaints that are on here. If your motor is not spinning... It has to do with capacitors, and uh, there are some very archaic looking capacitors on this thing. Um, sometimes they measure fine, sometimes they don't. Is it worth changing them? It's up to you. I mean, you can wait for the for it to fail, or you can go ahead and do your maintenance on here. Um, let me get this board out, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I've got the board flipped over. Uh, these are all adjustments for speed, and uh, here's our main slider switch for 3345. And uh, 16 speed on this one. Uh, old style Germanian transistors here. Old style film caps. Um, and here's our two uh, electrolytics over here. And uh, we're going to measure those. I don't know if I can go in a little closer. I'm a little bit on an angle here. Whoopsie. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to do it. Oh, maybe like that. So we're going to measure those. <clears throat> Just because they're... They're a known failure point, but um, I think the Mark II has better quality capacitors. Um, I've seen videos where guys are working on the, the Mark I, and these are like uh, silver cans. They look really ancient. So, yeah, maybe hopefully these are better quality. So let's uh, just set up my tester here. And I'm going to put a couple pegs in the slots. And then we'll put some alligator clips on the caps. All right. And what is this? This is a thousand microfarad at 25 and another thousand microfarad at 25. Axial caps. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, that's no good. Oh, I've got this in the wrong slot. All right, let's try that again. Eleven hundred point four eight on ESR. I think see what that that would be within spec. Let's try this one. Mm, 
1100 and 0.47 so they're both okay so I am not gonna mess around with these I am just going to leave them in place motor spinning uh, if you want to change them go right ahead um, you can even put in a, a radio cap in there uh, you just bend the leads over to to get to the the spread out here or um, yeah, you might be leaving let's see what a thousand twenty five looks like here here's a thousand twenty five standard size these days you can uh, bend these leads out like this right and then you can seat it in like that and it'll it'll fit no problem right so if that's all you have if you don't have a, an axial cap if you're going to order parts order an axial cap i don't have axial caps in stock so all right so that's the uh the motor board and uh, we're just going to put that right back in place and we'll continue on with our service okay we're back up top um we're on paint cans now so i can reach the three springs under here one two and number three is going to be a little bit more difficult to reach it's in a bad spot i think i'm going to need a third paint can i'm going to have to support it on the corners because i can't get my hand on that one just hang on a sec okay i put a third paint can i got corner corner and middle here so we're good and solid and i can reach all the springs and uh to uh set up your springs you're going to have to load up your plinth so Grab your sub platter. You do not need um, your belt installed for this. <clears throat> Grab your platter. You're gonna grab your mat and your adapter, and you're gonna put a record on there. Now I did a little bit of adjustment underneath there. And as you can see, it's already a little bit better. If perhaps just a little tight, cause we're, we're pushing up. We want it to be floating and we're not getting that right now. So we're gonna loosen up our springs a little bit. And although you're not gonna be able to see this and don't, so you're going to scratch your record. This is just a test record. Now my bench is not perfectly level. So don't look at the level. I am just looking for something similar. <clears throat> so I'm not too far off. And what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start loosening these springs. And it's basically lefty loosey, righty tighty. Same as anything else, right? It's difficult to work blind. I'm floating there, not so much here. There, that's better. You can already see we've got bouncy bouncy now much better and over here we are too tight so I'm going to loosen up this spring it's really hard to get my hand in here this one's in a bad spot There we go. There we go. So you get what I'm trying to achieve here. I'm trying to achieve a plinth that is totally suspended by the springs. Because you want that isolation effect. Use a little bit more over here. I'm pleased over here on the, uh, on the left side here. Right side is a little bit more. And I'm also looking at, um, don't pay too much attention to this level. What I'm looking at is the height between the plinth and the base, just to kind of get like over here, we're, 
we're looks like a little high, right? Whereas here we're sinking down a little bit. So we can definitely come down on this right side. So I'm going to keep playing with this until I'm happy with the suspension. And then once we get that all done, we'll just do a, a service. I have to order a belt for this thing um, and I'll get that in. Um, you can still do a sound test on it. And um, this SME arm, I'm going to actually, excuse me, have a peek online and uh, get the setup instructions for it. So I won't be doing that in this video. It's not about the SME, it's about the thorns. Um, and uh, we're going to continue on. I'll be right back. So I just wanted to show you how I got this set up right now with the uh, paint cans. So there's one back there, one at the front, one at the side, and then you got to reach underneath and grab those white knurled knobs. And you can see there's one at the back there. There's one right here in the top of the picture and another one. Now it's behind the paint can. So that's where the other one is. So I just wanted you to see that. And I just want you to see the, uh, how the plinth is sitting. See how it's down on the side, but it's not bottoming out unless I really push down on it, but it's good over here. It's a quite a bit higher. So we definitely have more room to adjust. And then what you're going to want to do is get under here and grab this and you're going to turn it. I'll just show you what happens when you turn it. You'll see that start to lower. See how it's starting to go down? All right. You don't want it too low because lowering this one will actually start to affect this side. And as, now, as you can see, I am bottoming out here, right? So I have to readjust this one and we're going to tighten now. But at the back, as you can see, it's up all the way, which means that one is too high. So it is a bit of a game to play here until you get it perfectly adjusted. So I'm going to continue playing and I shall return. We are back up on the base with the bottom sticking up again. Um, I do have the uh, plinth where I want it as far as uh, the springs are concerned. I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, one thing I'm not pleased about is, uh, ooh, I don't like this ground cable flopping around like this either. Uh, it goes like that and that is broken off. Lovely. Um, one thing I want to show you is the feet. So the Thorns base is pretty simple. It's just a piece of thick cardboard and it just has four, I think in the factory, they're just like some plastic nubs that just uh, screw into the, uh, the base of the turntable. Um, somebody that was missing two feet altogether, someone had used some furniture uh, pads or whatever and used these big, ugly, gigantic wood screws which are way too big, probably crack the base. So we're gonna toss those. This is the solution I've come up with. So I'm thinking I'm gonna put four of these plastic kind of rings here. And uh, the screws are much more reasonably sized. And once that's screwed in, I will put one of these sticky pads on there. Now the feet have basically nothing to do with the isolation of the turntable. That's all in the springs. And I know you're thinking, oh, but then you got to, um, you know, you got to unstick this to get the screw out. Yeah, well, so be it, right? Um, I suppose I could uh, drill a hole through here for better access, but no, I'm just going to, I'm just going to put that down and then I'm going to stick that in the middle. And if you want to get at the turntable later on, you're going to have to unfortunately unstick these and buy some more at the dollar store for 99 cents, right? So. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, I'm going to start doing that and I shall return. Okay, the new feet are installed. I think it's an elegant solution for the problem here. It's nice, it's got the plastic there. And then we got the nice, these are very thick and hard kind of felt pads. So that's going to suspend, you know, get it, it, it'll keep it quiet too because you know, these will, these will slide around a little bit. So, you know, you put rubber down and it's tough to move the table. It's not that it's going to move anywhere. This thing weighs, like I said, it weighs an, uh, a ton. But uh, these will allow you just to, to position your turntable nicely. And like I said, they have nothing to do with uh, the suspension of the turntable, right? So, all right, I'm going to get this back over and we'll start lubrication service. You're looking inside the bearing well of the Thorns TD-125. Uh, 
in there I have inserted about I don't know, five or six drops of this SAE 20 uh, three-in-one oil engineered for uh, quarter horsepower motors or larger it says here but this is a pure oil and uh, it works very well in this type of bearing and it's the correct um, viscosity for a Thorin's deck they require a 20 weight oil which is ROB 20 like I mentioned earlier so we've put some drops in there we have lubricated the main axle here you can see some of the oil there so we're going to drop the spindle in we're just going to let it drop naturally there it goes all the way down lovely now like I mentioned before, Thorne says not to lubricate this motor, but put a drop or two on the shaft of the uh, of the the motor here. Um, if you can't reach, get it on the end of a screwdriver and just touch the shaft that goes into the top bearing of the motor. Okay, tough to see, but it's just underneath. You want to lift this and get some oil in there, so right under there. All right, so what we'll do now, um, I have received a new belt, so we're going to install the belt, put everything back together, and do a quick sound test. Okay, here's our brand new belt. I ordered this in Canada, so it's not a, a Thacker, but it was a, a little less pricey, and I'm sure it's going to be just fine. I've also removed the second belt guide on the motor. Um, I've just left the one and I've actually uh, increased the height a little bit um, so it's right around where the, the belt rides on the pulley here. Um, when you have the second one there, it's just a pain in the ass to get the belt on and it's not going to slip off once it's running. So belt's on. There we go. Takes a second or two for it to get in its groove. And look how fast, well, let's put the platter on, see how fast it comes up to speed now. Platter on, and look at this. We have perfect suspension. So that the uh, platter is totally floating. Throw our mat on. There's a record on there. And uh, remember before we hit start, and it took, you know, probably a good 30 seconds or more for it to get up to speed. Let's see how fast it goes now. And that's it. It's up to speed. So they needed a belt really bad. Okay, this Thorns is done. Let's hear what it sounds like. Now, one thing I just want to mention, I don't know if I did or not, because it's been a few days since I, this one's been sitting off the, off the bench for a while, waiting for that belt to come in. But uh, this arm is missing some pieces. Uh, it's missing a lateral balance counterweight on this side here, and it's missing the anti-skate. So it's running without the, the lateral balance, which shouldn't be too huge of a problem. But it doesn't have any skate either, so the needle's going to want to have a tendency to pull into the center. Now, this is a fairly light tracking cartridge, and the arm is very high quality, so I'm hoping that it's going to track well. Can't play too much of anything. Especially on these inner grooves here, that's where I'm wondering if the missing the anti-skate weight is going to be a problem, but... Sounds really, really nice. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the arm over into the lead-out grooves here. And just see if it tracks into the record, it doesn't pull back. So sometimes if the anti-skating is bad, um, 
the arm will either skate across or if you get too much anti-skate it'll pull it back so hopefully what it does is it rides the the outer groove here the lead out groove and it stays in the center of the record without any issue Okay, that's good. That's a good sign. All right, at least it means that hopefully it's going to track the whole record without any major issues. But I can't do anything if I don't have the anti-skate weight and there's no counterbalance weight either. So that's the way I received it. Okay, so this was a great job. I'll leave that spinning I'll let that belt work in a little bit. Um, that's the Thorin's TD125 Mark II. So we did a whole bunch of work on this one, including lubrication and uh, setting up the uh, feet. Uh, I gave it a nice cleanup here. I also applied a little of uh, beeswax on the uh, wood here to give it a nice luster. I polished up all the, uh, the stainless steel here and gave it a, a general cleaning and uh, put a new ground connection on it. And uh, it's sounding great and it's running great. Hopefully the owner has um, those arm parts and uh, if he wants to bring it back, I can set it up for him or he can do it himself. But that's it for this one. Once again, thanks for tuning in and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.